afternoon, Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma. Welcome to Special Report Afternoon Edition. I'd like to thank KC Securities for sponsoring both the afternoon and the morning edition of Special Report. I'm Chris Oldcorn and I'm here with Colette Linden. How's Good. it going, Colette? It's going very well. It's uh, Tuesday afternoon. It's beautiful out there. Yes, it is. Cannot wait to, uh, as much as we love doing the show and working here at On TV, I can't wait to get outside. Mm -hmm. I want to do some running today. Um, we've got a lot of stuff today. First of all, the Premier has been pushed back to 1.30, I yes, do believe. He is. Yes. And he will be joined uh, with the Minister of Long Term uh, Care, care. Yep. as well as, remind me, Remind me who the other one is. <laughs> I cannot remember at the time. But uh, I know I this morning we said it was second. an unusual pair yes, to is. have them both together. Uh, hold on. So we'll sell, we shall see what happens there. Um, oh, it's the Solicitor General. Solicitor That's General. Why, yes. Yeah, and that is a that big is a deal. That's a weird pairing. Um, it is a weird all. pairing. Uh, to put together. And I'm not sure exactly what they're thinking is there, but or what, what they're talking about, because that's know. definitely two diff very different portfolios. Oh, heck. Solicitor General is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, what we want to start off with today is just a little discussion about all the American plates that we're mm -hmm. seeing here across uh, on our side of the, yeah. of the border, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, we know that people work at the hospital and from Michigan, and they're traveling back and forth. But that, I mean, I can't imagine that being uh, a large amount of people doing that. I know no. that before they had to yeah. choose, right? They which had hospital? to choose which hospital they wanted to work right. in. They couldn't work at both War Memorial and Sioux Area Hospital at Correct. the same time. Yeah. Uh, so where are all these other plates coming from? Who's letting them over? Why there's four wheelers and dirt uh, dirt bikes mm -hmm. coming over? Um, my other problem or concern area of concern is where are they going to when they come here? Are they stopping mm -hmm. along the way? I know if you work at the hospital, yeah. I would imagine once you leave your shift, you get in your car and you drive back. Now, wouldn't that be the safe thing to do? That would be what I would think, yeah. All right. So how is it that all these extra plates are coming across? Well, it's not just Michigan plates. No. I think we heard someone say that there was a plate, a Texas plate and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, we've been noticing yeah. a lot of plates in the Walmart parking lots and, and the no-frills parking lots. And it's not just here either. Lots. Like my parents were telling me a couple of weeks ago that there was uh, American plates opening their cottages, like down on Lake Erie and stuff like that oh, as well. okay. Uh, and I was showing up on the news, like in Toronto, that there was all these American plates. Okay, so uh, it's not just us. I, I thought it was it. just bordering communities, but no, it's not. Yeah, well, they're getting across at Niagara and then going to the sure. cottages yeah, there. Sure, but, sure, um, sure. But Toronto, I mean, that's Yeah, I saw one picture Niagara of a grocery store down in that area, and mm -hmm. it showed seven cars in a row, and they were all American plates. Really? Yeah, and okay. this was after the border was completely closed as well. Right. So I don't know what the thoughts are from uh, everyone in the community here, but we want to hear them. So what are your thoughts about that? Have you seen them around town? Um, what are your conclusions there? Also, we've got um, we've got our Facebook Live coming up, so mm -hmm. please uh, say hello. Tell us if mm -hmm. you'd like us to address any issues. We'll, we'll look that up for you and do the best we can and send us your birthday wishes. And share with us your thank you stories or your highlight of hero stories, and we'll make sure we share them with you. And hi to my mom who just joined. Oh, you hello, stream Mrs. Here on Facebook. Corn. How yeah. are you today? <laughs> um, how's the weather looking today? We're going to start with that first. Well, and it's then supposed hit some to be news. thunderstorming. Right now? It is not. It is not right now, so let's hope it doesn't. Um, I was wrong yesterday. It was supposed to thunderstorm yesterday, and it was beautiful yesterday afternoon and evening. Uh, and it's about 30 degrees out there without the Humidex. Nice. With the Humidex, we are at about 35, so it's nice and toasty out there. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be 29 as a high, 16 as a low, but with the Humidex, it's going to be into the mid-30s. Once again, a mixture of sun, thunderstorms, rain, pretty much could, anything could happen tomorrow. Uh, and then Thursday, uh, it was supposed to go down to like 15, but they've changed it yeah, now. Yeah, I see that. And it's just supposed to be rain and around 20. Uh, now the low could go down to 8, Ooh. which is the first time the low has been in single digits for quite a few days now, okay. 4 or 5, uh, which is giving us a little streak of uh, warm weather. Yeah, I guess. Uh, after, <laughs> you've you know, had enough. Here's a little yeah. taste of it. Here's a little and taste of something that's not snow. <laughs> well, uh, that's so good. That's Other than it, you know, thunderstormy. But mm. I think we need some rain right now because it's a little hot. We're going to move yeah. on to news. We've got a bunch of news today. So responsible cannibal, cannabis, cannibal, not cannibal, cannabis use. Responsible you. cannibals. Um, <laughs> and St. Regime. As Rep opposed to irresponsible cannibals. Oh, good Lord. Good start. Call that. <laughs> a chamber of commerce and partner to empower employee, employers with CAN-ED, so C-A-N-N-ED. And it's just to educate you on now that cannabis is legalized. Mm hmm that might affect your workplace. Um, you need to educate your employees. So they have an online learning system to do so, much like the, um, you know, when you have to go out and send out your human resources mm -hmm. to your, your staff and you go through the testing, whether it be um, the way that you conduct yourself in a business, same thing, they're adding that to, to that platform. So everybody's gonna be educated about cannabis in the workplace because it will be an issue. 
Okay, so the, pre the Prime Minister spoke today and he had a lot to talk about. But earlier um, there was reports about the Canadian Armed Forces. Yes. There's 36 members, um, now this is between Ontario and Quebec, please uh, know that, um, who are working in long-term care homes right now. And, and basically they're helping with the food trays and they're just helping where they can. Um, there are 36 members working in long-term care homes who now become sick with COVID-19. Unfortunately, um, 28 cases among the troops was less than a week ago. Now, the Prime Minister or whomever they're reporting to has asked for, originally asked for an update weekly on the, um, the status of the armed forces, mm -hmm. but now they're asking it for, for daily because that's, that's just how much it's growing. And um, like I said, there's... 14 of the military members mm -hmm. are in Ontario and 22 are in Quebec. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Well, they've joined, they're now frontline workers. Yeah. Um, it's also kind of not what they trained for as well. Absolutely not. Uh, unless obviously they were trained to be a nurse or a doctor in the actual armed forces themselves. Yeah. But um, they are doing a job that they were, it's actually kind of new to them. Uh, matter of fact, uh, when they first started, uh, there was the talk, they were talking about the training they had to do before they could even start to work in, in the long-term care homes so that they would know how to properly protect themselves. Yeah, I mean, and, um, and, and, and even that is not stopped them from actually catching COVID-19 no. as well. So that's but really unfortunate. But for the, the Prime Minister or the um, the body that's mm -hmm. uh, watching over this is asking for daily updates now, mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely newsworthy and something to be concerned about. Also, Canadians feel that there was a poll taken of about a thousand Canadians, I believe, um, or sorry, a thousand Ontarians, and then reached out to other provinces about how you feel about your government. And they broke it down from the federal, provincial to municipal levels, and what you feel about hiding. And the poll suggests that um, they are really not satisfied. They think that 68% of the federal government is, 68% of the, those who were polled think the mm -hmm. federal government is hiding things. The best um, 74% um, thinks that the provincial government is actually doing a good job mm -hmm. and not hiding things. So that's a huge jump between mm -hmm. the two levels of government. Um, municipal government, I feel like it just, you know, kind of passes down what the They much are. Tied and you're going to get lot, into that about you know, a lot yeah. of what every is regulated in each province is done by the provincial That's government, right. not the federal government. And you're going to get into that later I when you talk about the that. city yeah. meeting. So we'll get back to that. But um, also Canada is going to host a major United Nations conference on dealing with the economic crisis by COVID-19. Justin Trudeau announced that today. Um, not too sure when that's going to take place, but that is a top priority. We'll be expanding li liquidity in the global economy and maintaining financial status. So Ah, it's a pretty big deal for Canada to be hosting that. Yeah, are they all coming in person? I don't know. <laughs> or is um, this a Zoom meeting? The, no, sorry, it's um, no, it's not going to be. It's going to be next month, and right now it's just set up as a Zoom meeting. Zoom, or, okay. Uh, well, whatever platform they yeah. use, but we'll say Zoom yeah. right now. And one other thing, and I don't know, I have to look into this more, but Justin Trudeau says when there's tests available, he will test himself. But I don't know if it's the, if he's Maybe the, it's testing, the, new, the test. new testing. Yeah. I don't think it's the test whether to be tested if he had COVID-19. Because he or, was tested, was he not? That's what you're saying, because his wife tested positive, yeah, his as wife everybody was positive, knows. And he, they tested him and his kids. And that was in the early stages of yeah. this whole pandemic. She was one of the first yeah. global sort of leaders, families to actually, mm -hmm. like she was positive even before Boris Johnson was in the UK. That's so right, yeah. She was one yeah. of the first people. And I she came back from the from UK. from London, that's yeah. right. That's where she got it. So I guess it's, it's just to see if, you know, if he does have the antibodies or not. But we have a whole lot of uh, news and more information coming up. But we're going to take a quick commercial break and come back with more information.
a message from the Government of Canada. In your home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room. Create privacy, or both, automatically. No hands required. So your shades will always be in the right place, at the right time, in style. And it's only from Hunter Douglas. At Maitland Ford Lincoln, we see our trucks everywhere. We see them on Queen Street, Lake Street, North Street, Bay Street, Second Line, Third Line, Fourth Line, Pine Street, Great Northern People's Road, Wellington, Cora Road, Bruce Street, Carmen's Way, Northern Ave, Trunk Road. Folks come from all over Algoma District and beyond to buy their truck at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Amazing prices, outstanding service. King Street, Shannon Road, Goulet Bay, Black Road, Government Road, and even on Pine Shores. Yep, our trucks are everywhere. Get yours at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Built for Northern Life. On Great Northern Road, just north of the hospital. Welcome back. Thanks to Casey Security for your sponsorship. I also wanted to mention, we always comment on our Facebook, but we have an ins our Instagram um, handle mm -hmm. that we'd like you to follow too. It's our ad on TV, and we'd like you to follow that because Danny is busy, busy, busy uploading um, our up uploading behind the oh scenes videos goodness. and things thank yes. you yes anyway over to you my friend what's on facebook right now i think maybe sure. you should uh, announce this one yeah uh, so <laughs> i'd like to say hi to erica my mother and tammy um my mom asked as we discussed this morning the size of my house how big the house would have to be for my parents to live with me <laughs> Yeah, what's your I'm answer? I'm thinking somewhere around 27,000 square feet. Oh, 27,000 yeah. square feet. Holy yeah, so Somewhere in that range. Uh, and she thinks you're a lovely daughter, which is kind of fitting <laughs> since you. your this mom thinks I'm great. I know, I know. Yeah, my, I know. My Basically, our parents Chris like each me. other. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, instead of actually liking their own kids. So, yeah, I'm so very, glad I did I am very nice. my mother doesn't like me anymore and she likes you. <laughs> That's because she knows I'm going to take care of her. Uh, apparently, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. Oldcorn. Yeah. I think you're wonderful, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, it's Colette's <laughs> a lovely daughter. Wow. <laughs> All right, what else All do you right. have? All right, so I, uh, tonight on my show at 7 p.m., I have an interview with Diane Boudreau. She is running for Region 4 oh, for the right. Provisional Council of the Métis Nation of Ontario. Mm -hmm. uh, the election's coming up next Monday on June the 1st, and we have a short excerpt from that interview for you right now. So, why did you decide to enter politics? Well, I decided to enter politics for the MNO because we have a lot of people who haven't, um, in my view, haven't had enough representation for our area. So um, some people asked me if I would run, so I said, sure. And what is the Region 4? Like, what area does that cover? Region 4 covers from Massey to White River, around to Grow Cap, across Sault Ste. Marie, and back to Massey. It's quite a large area. Alrighty. And uh, for a regional councillor, could you explain for our audience what a regional councillor does? Well, my job is to work with the uh, two councils that we have. We have historic Sault Ste. Marie Métis Council and the North Channel Métis Council. And I would work with them and um, bring the people together. And that was uh, part of my interview with Diane Boudre. You can see the rest of that interview, the full interview, at 7 p.m. tonight or 7 a.m. tomorrow morning as well on Facebook Live and on our streaming. So you can watch us on Roiku, Amazon Fire, and other streaming services. And I'd like to say hi to Frankie Automotive, who just yeah. followed us on Instagram. Awesome so, stuff. So add thank you very much. Add on TV, everybody. Add on yes. TV. So uh, there's not been much change at all here in mm -hmm. the Sioux. The outbreak at the extended maple. View, Maple View yeah. is over, good, uh, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, we are we've only had one new case, uh, which was over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everything stayed stable since then. Uh, we're waiting for about 370 tests to come back. Uh, but for the province of Ontario, we actually have some good news today. Uh, 287 new cases today. That is after we've had five straight days of 400 plus new yeah. cases. So that's that's a good drop. Yeah, now, great. the last time they put a two in front of something, they mm -hmm. didn't add it correctly and had to correct it the next day. 
fingers crossed that it actually is mm. 287 this time because okay. they told us 287 last time and they were wrong by 87. So, uh, yeah, and we had, uh, they only had tested 9,875 9, people yesterday and we have the capacity to do over 20,000. 20, wow. So, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Hopefully they can pop that number back up to the, you know, getting close to 20,000. Yeah, but absolutely. But we are, uh, have to go to a commercial break, so we'll be right back. celebrating our 65th anniversary dating back to services originating in our community in 1954 which is quite some time ago. It's been a great opportunity this past year to recognize the, the pioneers, the stakeholders that worked tirelessly um, to create uh, what we are today. We're grateful for everything that the families 65 years ago and the people that assembled the organization um, have done in order for us to achieve the success that we're experiencing 65 years later. For some more news with Colette. Thanks, Chris. So heating and uh, because of the heat, not heating and cooling, because of the heat, <laughs> uh, there's cooling locations. Now, this is something they do in Toronto. I'm not mm -hmm. too sure if that's also something they've done in the Sioux in the past, but I know with Toronto, with uh, the homeless, um, they have provided cooling stations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so considering the issues that we're going through right now, that um, those cooling stations have been closed down. Mm -hmm. So City of Toronto has quickly um, picked up six designated sites as of this morning, but there's times from 11 to 7. So, you know, I just, I was wondering what maybe Sault Ste. Marie might be doing for, for the homeless here, where they can go to cool off because it's gone from, you know. Yeah, we're in the cool, mid 30s with the humid right now. It's yeah. hot. I mean, to be outside in that all night, yeah. all day and all night. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I thought that was pretty yeah, important. Yeah, they actually have to, they use community centers and schools in the summertime in Toronto for mm -hmm. people who don't have air conditioning. They can go and sit in the gym. Yeah, example, which is with great. With air conditioning yeah. in, in a local, like public schools and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I know that they did that when I was in Toronto. I'm not sure they still do because I haven't sure. lived there in about six or seven years. It doesn't but, say what six locations yeah. where they are, but yeah. I mean, I'm glad that they, they have um, done some of But normally that's situation. what they do like in July and August yeah. when it gets like, I really hot. I mean, it, but it, it's so, hot right now. So, yeah. okay, a little bit of uh, some organized crime for you. And it says, no, it says, um, as opposed to disorganized I, crime. <laughs> well, maybe it is a little bit of both. <laughs> it says on the outskirts of Toronto. So if anybody from the area knows, that's probably Woodbridge we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, there's two tow truck companies or, well, there's violent battles between several tow truck, chump, tow truck companies. Um, York Regional Police say the competition for control of the towing market has led to murders, attempted murders, assaults, arsons, and property damage. They say rival tow truck companies have been fighting over profits from towing vehicles and alleged frauds allowing the initial tow. They're also saying that they wow. are setting up 
some insurance scams or setting up um, accidents, you know? So mm. you go pick up the cars and off they, off they go. So York Regional Police said the companies partnered with repair shops and car rental companies to carry out these alleged frauds. That's a pretty big win for the York Region Police Department. They say they, they seized more than three dozen guns, mm. thousands of rounds of ammunition and large quant quantities of All of over course. towing broken down vehicles? Wow. Hey, well. I guess it's a big competition. That's one industry. I don't. I didn't realize you needed to be packing a gun if you're a tow truck driver. Right, apparently, apparently in trauma, you uh, need to be. Well, I mean, these are vest. certain tow truck companies owned by certain people. So, mm. um, yeah. So that's a great story coming out of um, outskirts of Toronto, which we yeah. will say uh, Woodbridge. Now, as opposed to our local crime. Which was someone broke into a funeral home and didn't steal anything. Yes, they did. And that happened at the end of April. They yes. did break into the funeral home. They did not steal anything. They have them on camera. I think it happened at like 1.30 yeah. in the morning. And uh, so But who breaks into a funeral home I, and steals absolutely I'm nothing? I'm not too I'm sure not, what you're going to steal from a funeral home. Especially actually, right now when they're pretty much you. closed down, too. Yeah, I... Like, I were they looking for toilet paper? I have paper? no idea what's going on. Toilet maybe paper and hand paper. sanitizer? Maybe some hand maybe, soap? Maybe, maybe. We want to get into some little, um, some funny jokes after this story, but... Um, we wanted to mm -hmm. talk about what people are doing for social distancing, and we found some creative memes. But before we get to that, I just wanted to point out that um, hundreds of Muslims from a mosque in Germany came together for holiday prayer most recently. And there's an image there um, that is them praying with social distance um, in effect and practicing. Wow. So it's a, it's a good lesson in, for churches around here, maybe if they want to pick up their services on the weekends, if they want to do it outside. I'm not too sure what, what can be done, but... Um, you know, every second pew, maybe third pew. I don't know what they can do, but um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, actually, one of the largest churches in in the U.S. started in a drive-in theater, and I think you might kind of see drive-in church start this summer because I'm not oh, sure many people knows? are going to want to go inside of a church right now, yeah, or yeah. inside of any building for that matter, with a large <laughs> group of people. I, I know like, I don't. Well, I know like, I don't. the gathering size. How, how do you have a church service if you can only have five people at a time? Yeah. I mean, yeah. what, what if you have 200 parishioners? I mean, what are you going to do? Run like. Well, we can know, show you 30, some ideas what other people are doing. A week. Some people that other people are doing. We've got some, some images to show you on the screen shortly. And it's um, what people are doing to, to do physical distancing or uh, social distancing. We've had some um, images here. Um, Mike, yes. if you want to show them, the, the pool noodles coming out of the head. Yes. Um, and then what was the other one where they oh, had. Oh, the one where they walk yes. around the tube around? Yes, them? I love this. Oh, guy. there's the pool noodle He's, guy, yeah. He's just fantastic idea, yeah. and he's, but I mean, everybody's just staring at him. So the next one, I believe, is like the big, the yeah. tire. Walking around in a big tire. Hilarious, right? And those are like the tires you have like uh, at like a water park, right? I, that yes. you slide down. Well, you slide down, yeah. you're going the lazy river, right? Yeah. Maybe they're just, maybe that's just a lineup for the lazy river. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But we've got some other uh, images and means that we wanted to go through and some entertainment. But hey, Matthew McConaughey and his wife delivered 110,000 masks to rural. Texas hospitals on the weekend mm -hmm. so um, just wanted to acknowledge that oh my yeah. god he is handsome well he is from Texas isn't he from yes, just he outside is. Austin he's got that like that that, yeah. that nice little accent on him too and I didn't know that Andrea Bocelli had the uh, COVID or coronavirus COVID-19 but oh. so did his whole family so the 61 year old according to a piece translated obviously yeah. um, spoke to journalists at a hospital in Italy the thing revealed he was now giving plasma for research this mm. piece uh, stated Bocelli just recovered sorry discovered he had COVID-19 on March the 10th but after taking the test he hadn't had any symptoms but his family also had it, uh, his wife and his children and but they are all fine now so way to go but he was part family. of that concert too that that 10-hour concert that went around the world Lady Gaga did wasn't he oh that? I don't know I don't know I'm pretty sure he was no. I mean there was a lot of people that sang on that thing I'm yeah. pretty sure he was part of that if I remember yeah. correctly hmm. he was part of one of those singing concerts well, he should be. Uh, He's got an happens. amazing voice. Yeah. We have some more sports coming up uh, about the NBA, and you have some updates you want to share, and we'll mm -hmm. share that with you after this commercial message.
though we can't always meet in person, we can still listen. Even though schools are closed, help is still available in your community. Even though you may be worried, services and supports are still here. In stressful times like these, families need mental health support more than ever. We are here to make sure you can stay connected to your community and culture. Nous savons qu'il peut être difficile de rester à la maison, mais vous n'êtes pas seul. And we know asking for help for yourself and others can be hard. But there are people in your community who are ready to support you. No matter your age, gender, sexual identity, race, or culture. No matter the day, time, or issue. We're here to help. Welcome back. So, yeah, last night was the City Council meeting here in Sault Ste. Marie. It was almost four hours, oh. which is significantly longer than the last few that were only about an hour, hour and a half. You had a long day yesterday. Uh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a long, long day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, let's talk about uh, one of the things that they talked about that's most important, which mm -hmm. is the economic recovery here in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay, so they did a survey and they went out and asked local businesses, and this is what they found. About 37% of businesses right now think that they could be bankrupt within the next few months. That they just, there's no way for them to actually recover and reopen. 44% uh, of businesses have had a significant financial impact and 40% have had to reduce their workforce. Um, and the government programs are helping, mm -hmm. but they're not enough. Uh, and so the city's looking at different ways that they can help businesses. Um, one of the things they've done is they've deferred some penalties uh, and taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, so like for example, the taxes that were due May 5th, that installment, they've delayed that. They're not charging you the interest or the penalties on that. Uh, for example, there was no municipal sewer charge uh, for April and May. Uh, they might have to do more of that into the future, trying to help alleviate some of the costs yeah. that businesses have. Yeah. Uh, but there is three areas that they're going to focus on for us to Those restart, which area. is technology, education, and tourism. Those are the primary focuses of what they want to do okay. to try and help the businesses who are hurting the most. Obviously, tourism is hurting very badly, so that's one of the four. Sorry, one of the three businesses that they're looking to help as much as they possibly can. Wow, that's amazing. So, I know PUC was helping out a lot too with mm -hmm. uh, dropping the firm, their rates yeah. and then the peak times they were peak moving time, at. And gone. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's still continuing on, but that was very, yep. very helpful. Awesome stuff. So you had a good uh, good time at the city council. Oh yeah, I'll have more tomorrow. Okay, yeah, good. There was some feisty stuff about a dog park oh. between the mayor and a councillor, which was kind of spicy. <laughs> We were yeah. spicy this morning. Yes, yes. We were spicy, yeah. and Mike was very spicy this morning. Um, okay, so on to the NBA. Uh, first of all, there was a story about a, ca a Cleveland Cavalier player, Cavalier player who was in, in Florida. I guess he's back home. Mm -hmm. And he left a tip for somebody, a $1,000 tip. He went in for a cup of coffee with a friend and a $1,000 tip. So awesome stuff. But while we're in Florida, did you know that the NBA, NBA might be picking up in Disney? That's where How? they want to play out the rest of the 2019-2020 season. With all the teams? It just says that the plan makes plenty of sense on paper. Few other locations have Disney's combination of housing and athletic facilities. That's true. They're massive. <clears throat> yeah, it's privately owned. Yeah. So there you go. Um, and it, it would be the playoff season, right, that uh, they're doing. So there's only so many teams that yeah. uh, we But I don't know how they would... Yeah. ESPN they can't would, have spectators anyway, so... If you're just doing television, the location really doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Um, just at the bottom of the screen, or the side of the screen, not the bottom, you'll see the um, the premier's pulpit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he he will not be up till 1:30, so we will be throwing to him. But yeah, yes. as soon as he comes up, we will throw over to him. We have a couple images quickly we want to get to uh, about that. Just mm -hmm. some funny, funny memes that we want to share with you. So go ahead, Mike, pop those up, and we'll talk about these. Um, are you drinking more while in lockdown? Yes, no, and well, apparently this person is. Ripping off your mask in the car is the new taking off your bra when you get home, and every woman would appreciate that meme. And now we are gonna rip off this bra and go over to Premier Ford. 